seek him who made the Pleiades and Orion, and turns deep darkness into the morning, and darkens the day into night, who calls for the waters of the sea, and pours them out upon the surface of the earth, the Lord is his name. Amos 5, verse 8. Good day, sisters and brothers. Welcome to prayer on Friday, the 29th of September. This is a holy day, St. Michael and all angels. Reading from For All the Saints, Today we celebrate those mysterious beings which Scripture calls angels, a name which comes from the Greek word for messengers. Messengers from God can be visible or invisible and may take human or non-human forms. Christians have always felt themselves to be attended by healthful spirits, swift, powerful, and enlightening. These spirits are often depicted in Christian art in human form, with wings to show that time and space do not constrain them, with swords to signify their power, and with dazzling raiment to represent their ability to enlighten faithful humans. Of the many angels mentioned in the Bible, only four are called by name, Michael, Gabriel, Uriel, and Raphael. In the book of Revelation, the archangel Michael is presented as the powerful agent of God who wards off evil from God's people and delivers peace to them at the end of this life's mortal struggle. Many good and faithful Christians find it difficult to accept the existence of angels. For them, angels have no more reality in fact than unicorns, griffins, or the phoenix. It may be true that the existence of angels is not one of the things in which Christians must believe if they want to be saved. Yet, whenever Christians say the Nicene Creed, they confess that God has created, quote, all that is, seen and unseen. Entertaining the possibility of angels may be one way of acknowledging the sheer diversity of life visible and invisible, that God has ordained in creation. Let us pray. Eternal God, you have ordained and constituted in a wonderful order the ministry of angels and mortals. Grant that as your holy angels stand before you in heaven, so at your command they may help and defend us here on earth through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, as we prepare to worship Almighty God, let us with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins, that we may obtain forgiveness by His infinite goodness and mercy. Please join me. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God rules over all the earth. O come, let us worship. Psalm 8 exalts the Lord, the governor of all things. O Lord, our governor, how exalted is your name in all the world. Out of the mouths of infants and children, your majesty is praised above the heavens. You have set up a stronghold against your adversaries to quell the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you have set in their courses, what are humans that you should be mindful of them, the son of man that you should seek him out? You have made humans but little lower than the angels. You adorned them with glory and honor. You give them mastery over the works of your hands. You put all things under their feet, all sheep and oxen, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatsoever walks in the paths of the sea. O Lord, our governor, how exalted is your name in all the world. Let us pray. 
Blessed are you, creator of heaven and earth. Amid the immensity of the universe, you are mindful of us and seek us out. Blessed are you for the gift of your Son, who humbled himself to share our life, that we might be raised with him to glory and splendor. Blessed be your holy name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Together, glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Because of St. Michael and all angels, our reading today is Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 to 14, which speaks of God's rule and reign, and also Christ's superiority to the angels. Hebrews 1, chapter 1. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors and many in various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, God has spoken to us by a son, whom God appointed heir of all things, through whom God also created the worlds. The son is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being and sustains all things by his powerful word. When he had made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, You are my son, today I have begotten you. Or again, I will be his father, he will be my son. And again, when he brings the firstborn into the world, God says, Let all God's angels worship him. Of the angels, he says, He makes his angels winds and his servants flames of fire. But of the Son, he says, Your throne, O God, is for ever and ever, and the righteous scepter is the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God has anointed you with the oil of gladness beyond your companions. And in the beginning, Lord, you founded the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. They will all wear out like clothing. Like a cloak, you will roll them up. Like clothing, they will be changed. But you are the same, and your years will never end. But to which of the angels has he ever said, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Are not all angels spirits in the divine service sent to serve for the sake of those who are to inherit salvation? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Scripture is pretty clear. Angels are sent to help us and we give thanks. I myself have never seen an angelic creature, though God has sent angels in human form to help me in times of need. But I do know credible people who have told me about being visited by angelic creatures, and I believe them. I often pray for people as they travel that the Lord would send angels to go before them. May the Lord send angels to us in our time of need. And may the Lord empower us to be angels for others in their times of need. In chapter 9, Jehu, who anointed to be king, does carry out judgment against Joram, son of Ahab, and Jezebel. Jehu also carries out judgment against King Ahaziah of Judah. Jezebel as well is murdered in the purge. Pick up the story in Second Kings chapter 11, verses 1 through 20. When Athaliah, the mother of Ahaziah, king of Judah, learned that her son was dead at the hand of Jehu, king of Israel, she promptly killed off all who were of royal stock. But Jehoshabah, daughter of King Joram and sister of Ahaziah, secretly took Ahaziah's son Joash away from among the princes who were being slain and put him and his nurse in a bedroom. And they kept him hidden from Athaliah so that he was not put to death. He stayed with her for six years, hidden in the house of the Lord, while Athaliah reigned over the land. In the seventh year, Jehoiada sent for the chiefs of the hundreds of the Karites and of the guards, and had them come to him in the house of the Lord. He made a pact with them, 
exacting an oath from them in the house of the Lord, and he showed them the king's son. He instructed them, This is what you must do. One third of those who are on duty for the week shall maintain guard over the royal palace. Another third shall be stationed at the Sir Gate, and the other third shall be at the gate behind the guards. You shall keep guard over the house on every side. The two divisions of yours who are off duty this week shall keep guard over the house of the Lord for the protection of the king. You shall surround the king on every side, every man with his weapons at the ready, and whoever breaks through the ranks shall be killed. Stay close to the king in his comings and goings. The chiefs of hundreds did just as Jehoiada ordered. Each took his men those who were on duty that week and those who were off duty that week, and they presented themselves to Jehoiada, the priest. The priest gave the chiefs of hundreds King David's spears and quivers that were kept in the house of the Lord. The guards, each with his weapons at the ready, stationed themselves from the south end of the house to the north end of the house at the altar and the house to guard the king on every side. Jehoiada, then brought out the king's son, placed upon him the crown and the insignia. They anointed him and proclaimed him king. They clapped their hands and shouted, Long live the king! When Athaliah heard the shouting of the guards and the people, she came out to the people in the house of the Lord. She looked about and saw the king standing by the pillar, as was the custom. The chiefs with their trumpets beside the king and all the people of the land rejoicing and blowing trumpets. Athaliah rent her garments and cried out, Treason! Treason! Then the priest Jehoiada gave the command to the army officers, the chiefs of hundreds, and said to them, Take her out between the ranks, and if anyone follows her, put them to the sword. For the priest thought, Let her not be put to death in the house of the Lord. They cleared a passageway for her, and she entered the royal palace through the horse's entrance. There she was put to death. Then Jehoiada solemnized the covenant between the Lord on the one hand and the king and the people on the other, as well as between the king and the people, that they should be the people of the Lord. Thereupon all the people of the land went to the temple of Baal. They tore it down, smashed its altars and images to bits, and they slew Matan, the priest of Baal, in front of the altars. Jehoiada the priest then placed guards over the house of the Lord. He took the chiefs of hundreds, the Karaites, the guards, and all the people of the land, and they escorted the king from the house of the Lord into the royal palace by the gate of the guards. And he ascended the royal throne. All the people of the land rejoiced, and the city was quiet. As for Athaliah, she had been put to the sword in the royal palace. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Again, we see a purge of the royalty and those loyal to them when a new dynasty is installed. Here we have Joash installed as king over Judah. We now turn to our intercessions. Through our baptism, we are joined to Christ as God's beloved children. As sisters and brothers in the Spirit, let us call to God for the needs of the world and the church, saying, Lord, have mercy for the victory of justice among the nations, and for the outpouring of the Spirit's gift of peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the liberation of all oppressed and imprisoned, for the preaching of the liberating gospel, and for reconciliation of all who oppress and persecute others, for the healing of all who are gripped by despair and frustration, and for all who inspire them with hope and joy, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all in this community to be alive to the call of their baptism, for those to be baptized, baby Melody coming soon, and for all who guide and teach along the way, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who in their illness look to us for strength and encouragement in Christ, and for all who have died in the expectation of Christ's full victory in their life and death, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Gathering our prayers, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Beloved, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Friends, have a wonderful day today celebrating the victory of St. Michael the Angel. And we appreciate you showing support on Sunday for Father Ajit and our sung morning prayer. God bless you. Have a wonderful weekend. TGIF.